Welcome to the second day of TechEd North America 2011. Uh, thanks for getting up early and coming to our presentation today. My name is Marcelo Farjala. I'm a program manager on the Link client team, and I work on the uh, Link APIs and SDK. This is Albert Koyman, my marketing colleague. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we want to start off uh, first getting to know you guys a little bit so um, I know who I'm speaking to, and maybe I can tailor the talk. Uh, more technical, less technical. Um, first of all, who here has Link deployed in their company? Raise of hands, please. So a little under half of you. So now I'm also selling you on Link here. OK, I got gotcha. you. Um, and do I have developers? Can I see developers raise your hand? So about a little over half of you probably developers. OK, cool. So then I'll spend a little bit more time looking at some code, too. Um, so because you guys don't all have Link yet, I'm gonna, you know, the, the, the demos are going to be really good for you guys to see, you know, one, what can Link do uh, then just outside the box. And then also um, we can dive a little bit into code. So do you have any questions for them, Albert? Nope. This is cool. Albert's my color commentator. So every now and then he'll make some comments on, on what I'm showing. We're a, we're a duo here. So uh, what can you do? with the Link Client APIs. Um, hopefully today I'll show you that the Link SDK adds quite a bit of value on the out-of-the-box Link Client experience. I'm going to show you how you can use our SDK to integrate Link within your own applications. Uh, and then also, from that integration, you can send context from the application that is starting the communication. And then, ultimately, you can extend Link to process that context and do something with it. So I'm going to show you quite, quite about three different uh, configurations of that scenario. And hopefully, by the end, you'll start to understand, oh, I see. I see this SDK thing. I see how I can add value. Um, and we can have questions um, at the end. Probably there's a, a section that I'll stop and, and ask questions. All right, and we're still trickling in. Come on in, guys. We're just about to start. So um, I like to start this part of the presentation with a story. And it's a story of two scenarios, one with just Link out of the box, and the other with Link uh, with the SDK integration that I'm talking about. I use a, a scenario that's very near and dear to me, and that's an application that I use, uh, that all of us actually use at Microsoft to, um, to build our, our software. Uh, let's call it Product Studio. So this is me in Product Studio, and just to give you a little bit more background on what Product Studio does, it's a bug tracker. So all the bugs that our testers find in our applications, uh, they'll put it the, into a Product Studio, and as a program manager, I have to go through all, my, uh, all the bugs and figure out what to do with them. I'd say about 60%, 70% of the time, I need more information in order to decide what we should do about it. So I need to contact the tester who opened the bug. I need to maybe contact the dev who's going to fix the bug and find out some more information. Um, before Link, I used to cut and paste the bug number and open Outlook send an email and paste the number and say, hey, you know, dev, you know, I've got a question about this bug. What are we going to do about it? I'd send the email. My dev probably, if he was very responsive, within three hours would respond. Maybe the next morning he'd respond, and, and he'd have another clarifi clarifying question. And it was very inefficient. With Link, that efficiency increases. So now I can have a real-time conversation. But I still, have to, I still have to leave my application here. I have to leave Product Studio. And I have to open Link. And I have to find that dev. Once I find him, I send him an IM. I still have to cut and paste the bug. I still have to say, hey, dev, can you please you know, open up Product Studio? He's got to say, are you sure I'm working on your feature? You know, I don't want my devs to ever stop working on my feature. But he has to stop what he's doing. He has to get out Product Studio, 
He's got to cut and paste the bug number into Product Studio. And then I tell him, OK, here's my question. So this is very unproductive still, even with Link. Well, let's take that same scenario and sprinkle a little SDK magic on it. Now I have Product Studio, and I've created some integration. I have UI controls that come with the SDK. I've um, integrated them within Product Studio. I see my developer right there, and I'm going to simply start a conversation from within Product Studio. Not only that, but the control, the UI control that, from which I started the conversation, it'll send contextual data. It'll send um, information about which application I started the conversation from. It'll send information about the bug number. All the bug detail, anything I want, will be sent with that invite. In addition, my developer's link client is configured to receive that context. And when it receives the context here from Product Studio, it knows that it's going to load its little Product Studio mini app inside of Link. Okay? And that mini app is going to know what to do with the contextual data that I'm sending. So in this case, my developer, he's working on his feature, and he gets an invite from me right away in his conversation window. He doesn't just see a normal IM. He sees an IM with an extension pane and with the Product Studio bug that I'm talking about right inside a link. Right away, he knows which bug I'm talking about. All I have to say is, hey, man, help me with this bug. I got this question. Much more efficient. And of course, after that, um, we can do some processing within the extension pane, and I can save it back into Product Studio if I want. There's a two-way contextual data pipe going on there. So hopefully, you saw some value in that. Hands, anybody? So that, that's, that's, that's what SDK can do for you. I mean, I really think, I'm, and I, not, not because I work on this product, but um, if you purchase the link uh, investment and you don't use the SDK to integrate with, within all of your applications, there's no reason any applications in your um, enterprise shouldn't be integrated if you have link, just the way I showed you, I think you're leaving value on the table. So this is part of, you know, I'm very passionate about my product. I'm passionate about this presentation. I want you to leave here thinking, not only do I need Link, but when I get Link, I'm going to do this integration that, that I just learned about. The integration, um, by the way, is, is very easy to do. Everything that I'm going to show you today is a matter of days. Um, and we, we built it for um, high-level programmers. You don't, you don't have to, to, to get into the bits so much. Um, these are UI controls that you can drag and drop into your, into your uh, development environment. You can easily configure contextual, and I'll, send, I'll show you how to do that. Next for my presentation, I want to switch over to um, an actual application that we integrated. So I I first I told you a story now, and now I want to show you a Visual Studio. Um, there's, where? How do I switch to C? Oh, it fell asleep. Thank you, Albert. That's why you're here. <laughs> the role of marketing. Yes. So. Um, in this case, I saw that we had just about half of you are, are developers. Um, we've taken Visual Studio. So a lot of you have worked inside of Visual Studio. Um, it's just an application that, that we chose to, to showcase some integration, because it makes a lot of sense to us, and we're hoping it makes some sense to you. Um, we basically took Visual Studio, and using the Visual Studio SDK, uh, which allows us to extend Visual Studio itself, we integrated it with Link using our Link SDK. So in this case, uh, I'll just run through the, uh, what the sample does. The plugin, once we, once we create the plugin for Visual Studio, um, allows you to highlight any piece of code. And once I highlight it, I see a Link icon appear. And I'll click on that Link icon and I can find my developer buddy that I want to code review with, or you know, let's say I'm stuck in some piece of code and I can't really figure out how to fix it. And uh, 
I'm going to start. Oh, sorry. What I did was uh, I highlighted the code. I uh, hovered over the link um, icon. What you saw was a panel open up. And in that panel, I had a search control, a link search control that allowed me to, to, to search, uh, just like you would in link. And I found my developer friend, Albert, here. And I started the conversation from within Visual Studio. And what you saw was context being sent. And that context was metadata about the Visual Studio project that I was in. Um, at the top here, can you see that? Um, I have a zoom in here. At the top here, you see the file that I was in. You see the line number. You see the, the type of code that, that the project is in. This is all metadata that I captured from uh, Visual Studio and I sent along with my invite. You also see the code snippet that I highlighted. This all went over as contextual data. And on Albert's end and on my end, we both have a, a Visual Studio Silverlight application that we also built as part of the integration. And that, that application knows what to do with that contextual data. So in this case, um, it rendered the code inside of Link. So we're both in Link. He doesn't open Visual Studio. He doesn't have to go to Visual Studio. He just sees a, a Link invite. He sees the code. We can have a conversation. I say, hey, I can't see a bug in here. Additionally, he can edit this code. So he's in Link. We're just turning Link into a code editor all of a sudden. Not a full code editor. You can't really debug or anything. But um, he goes ahead and, and, and adds a comment here. Albert's comment went here. Now there's a little bug in the demo where it didn't keep the markup. Sorry about that, guys. So he's editing. And I can edit back. And we can edit back and forth until I'm happy with the code. And when I'm done, I'm going to save this code right back into Visual Studio. And you see Albert's comment is inside of Visual Studio. So that's, that's a very quick Visual Studio integration that we did. Um, in, in fact, we had a summer intern make this demo. And he was brand new to our API. The API wasn't even done yet. And he was able to do this in a couple of weeks. Now, how many of you actually are using, for example, SharePoint? Here, look. That's a uh, number <laughs> added. <laughs> yeah. so. What, what I wanted to uh, call out is that this type of editing is not only something that you can actually integrate in products like Visual Studio, but you can also integrate this in SharePoint. So one of the options, for example, that you have is that when you have a SharePoint workflow and you would like to have an approval, one of the most, use most often used cases that I have seen is that people actually in that workflow no longer send out an email to ask for approval, but send out an IM, an IM to people who are available, so you check for presence, and at the moment that the IM comes in, you can actually see what the approval is about. And it's almost like a, dig a digital signature. You can actually ask the people to approve right from within this window inside com uh, Communicator, inside Link. Now, why is this important? Because it is important because of the fact that this actually works wherever you are. So the, the context that you actually can send is sent through that channel that actually is opened by having this conversation. And you can actually see wherever you are, wherever you are online, as soon as you're logged on to Link, you can give this approval. So this type of interaction actually can accelerate a business process with a great deal. And the acceleration of such a business process actually means a lot of money to your company. And therefore, this is such an important technology. So with other words, this is not only that can be done in Visual Studio, it can be done in any application, right. as long as you Keep the, in mind what is the use case that you have in order to accelerate the actual act activity that's mm -hmm. associated with it. That's a good point, Albert. So this integration can happen in SharePoint as well. Um, pretty much anything that you want to integrate, you can use the SDK for. So. Let me now go back to the PowerPoint presentation, um, just so I know you guys are awake out there. Visual Studio demo, pretty good. By the way, All this right, is. Cool. Uh, Available for a download at the end of the presentation, oh, there yeah. will be a link. Yeah. So if you would like to improve on it and uh, cut out the bugs, uh, yeah, thank, please. Thank you, Albert. Uh, thank you. Please help uh, us here. My last slide on the PowerPoint has a list of links uh, to resources. One of the links is a, a Channel 9 video of me doing this exact demo. You don't have to see that again. But there's another demo, uh, another link that actually has the page where you can download the source code for that exact same Visual Studio um, integration. 
So you developers, or if you have developers that you're supporting, they're going to love you for this. I, I think it's a really good application. And the source code's there, so you can fix all the bugs if you want. If you fix it, send it back to me so I can use it. So. All right, so now that I got your attention, and hopefully in your mind you're thinking, OK, I get this. SDK, you know, there's some, there's some value there. I want to now go in and introduce you to the SDK and break down what you just saw into components. And then we can go a little deeper. Um, the Link 2010 SDK, it's a managed API. Uh, full, full first class managed API, we took a lot of effort and, and passionate pain to, to make this thing very usable, .NET friendly. Um, all the patterns that you expect are, are there. It's a set of UI controls. So we give you uh, WPF UI controls and Silverlight UI controls that you can just drag and drop link UI into your application. And all this exposes all the functionality that you see in Link. So most of the stuff that you can do in Link, we have in the SDK. And of course, this is all that was used to do the integration that you just saw. A few notes that I like to uh, point out that not everyone is, is, it's not too obvious to everyone is, this very much is a link rich client API. That means the, the link rich client needs to be running on the local machine for you to use this API. Now a lot of people, when I say that, they go, ah, I don't want that. I have scenarios where I'm on the web or something and I don't, I don't you know, have a user who doesn't have link on it and I still want to enable them. That's another API. You'd want to look more on the server side, um, UCMA for that. Session tomorrow, 8.30. Good plug. But for, for this one, it's, 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 it's for when you have link on the machine and you just want to integrate that experience into these applications. Um, the, the SDK does ship with full documentation. You can also see updates of the documentation on MSDN. We're refreshing them consistently. Um, a lot of samples ship with the SDK. We have a really cool translator sample in there that you can use. Like I told you, the Visual Studio one is not in the SDK, but you can get it off of MSDN. How many of you were actually at the overview session yesterday of Link? So how many of you did uh, notice that translator? It was actually exactly the same concept, right? So there was something, maybe you can show it quickly. Uh, would you mind? Sure, sure, for those who haven't seen it. No, there's only one third that have seen it, so. Okay. Uh, so so two foreigners, uh, one Brazilian, one Dutch. Don't know how to talk English. Oh, you want to go there? Okay. That's, <laughs> that's ambitious. Okay, so uh, this wasn't part of the presentation, but we'll do it ad hoc here. we switch the screen first? Oh, yes. Helpful. We're, we're ambitious here. We're feeling really good with the demo gods. Hopefully, they will smile upon us. This is so solid. Even marketing can do it. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm talking to Albert here, and like he said, we speak different languages. Um, you know, within Microsoft, there's a lot of different nationalities. Um, everyone speaks English, but maybe different uh, levels of English. So this translator really shines when the person, you know, does speak English, but may, may not be confident, maybe, you know, in their, in their language, or they just want to check it out, and, and, and before they send it, they can, you know, they don't have to use a little dictionary. Let's just do English to, to Dutch. Okay. That, that's safer. <laughs> no one can check Dutch. That's what yeah. it is. Ah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What was the line that we did last time that was wrong? Let's not say that one again. <laughs> Just try it. <laughs> All right. So in this case, I'm speaking to Albert, who is Dutch. I put myself as English. Albert is Dutch. <clears throat> and I'm going to say, uh, I think I said, like, hi, good morning. Well, uh, say good morning. Good morning. How are you? Let's see if that translates. So here, I have a Silverlight extension application, just like I was uh, talking about before. And if you haven't, um, well, I'll get there, OK. <laughs> um, I, I, I put in my English string in the translation pane. Uh, what the app does, it, it goes and takes that, that string that I inserted, and it hits Bing APIs in the cloud. It's mashing up the, the link APIs with the translation APIs. And then it's inserting the translation into the conversation model using the link APIs. Very easy to do, very simple, but powerful scenario. And he, he replies in Dutch, 
It sees the incoming Dutch string. Again, it goes out, hits the Bing APIs, and uh, shows it to me in English. So I'll have, at the end, I'll have a, uh, a Dutch side of the conversation and a uh, English side of the conversation. <clears throat> again. And, and again, this is available as part of the SDK, yeah. but you can also download it from a website uh, called linguistic.cloudapp.net. So everyone who has using, is using OCS, you can just download it. It's uh, one simple. Is it linguistic? Link. Linguistic. Linguistic with a <laughs> dash in between. <laughs> Very easy to remember. <clears throat> But again, just a very simple demo we wanted to throw in there. Well, it's a bonus. There you go. All right, back to the presentation. Sorry to disrupt. All right, no, thank you. So again, the possibilities are endless, which you can do. The same guy who built that translator for us built a spell checker. <clears throat> and I know a lot of people wanted a spell checker and link. So you can build your own. <laughs> who, need, who needs link to do that? Build your own uh, spell checker. All right, so back to the presentation. Um, now that I've introduced the SDK, <clears throat> we're going to break down each component of what you saw. There were three of them. Integrate, send context, extend link. The first one is integrate. So we integrate link into third-party applications, and we make it very easy for you to do this. You don't have to build any of the UI yourself. We give you little Lego blocks, little, little pieces of the, the link UI to drag and drop into your application. We give you the contact list, uh, and this will recreate the exact contact list that you have inside of your link client. Um, if you don't want the exact link uh, contact list, we give you a flat custom list as well that you can give your own SIP URIs and bind it to the control. So, so for example, just a moment ago, you saw Product <coughs> Studio, our bug tool. That bug tool did not list the contact list that you have in link, but it actually lists the people who were involved in that particular project. So that is what we might mean with it. Actually yeah. dynamically retrieves the names of the people yeah. involved with that project. And so that my feature team, I would not use my contact list, of course. I would just send a, an array of SIP URIs that was my feature team, my dev, my test. Another control that we give you is a search uh, input control and a search results control. And we, we separate them out because we, we want to give you an ability to inject from a different source as well. So you can search uh, the gal, but if you have some other database that you want to search against, you can also uh, inject those into the results. So here um, you can search uh, using just link search, which does name and SharePoint skill search. That's also available through the controls. Um, you can check details. So just like in link, you can see the contact card. Uh, we have a contact card control. So you can uh, allow your users to, just from within you know, Visual Studio or SharePoint, get all this rich information about the person um, associated with that feature, for example. Uh, we also allow you entry points into launching link. So these controls, um, I can start a link call. I can start uh, an IM, uh, desktop sharing. And when I start it from here, what happens is the link's conversation window will launch. So that's important to remember. Uh, it's all, you're always launching Link's conversation window using these APIs. And the last control you get is the, um, my, it's the persona control, also called the me control. Um, this is, uh, allows a local user to set their own note, set their own presence, kind of give your, you know, make them feel like they're inside of a, of a Link-enabled application. So those are the, those are, that's how you integrate using the controls. The next uh, step is the send context step. So now that we have the UI inside of Product Studio, inside of Visual Studio or SharePoint, we wanted to do more than just integrate and start a conversation. We wanted to send some contextual data. So again, I have Product Studio, I have my controls, and I'm gonna now, um, it's, an, it's, it's, it's an attribute on the control, contextual info and I'm gonna configure what that info is. I'm gonna send an app ID, and that's the app ID of the extension pane that I want Link to load into the Link conversation window, and I'll show you what that app ID is later. Um, I also have app data. That's an XML blob, um, something that I want that app with the same app ID to process 
Link doesn't know anything about that, but the app on the other end will. And then I have a URL or EXE path, and this is where Link's going to look to launch um, uh, that app inside of, inside of uh, the Link conversation window. And when I send that context, um, you know, here again, Link sees the app ID. It checks the local machine. It says, oh, I have that app ID registered in my registry. And it's going to load it in the conversation window. And now that thing is ready to process the app data, right? One thing to note is this, this application that is loaded, it can be, it can be loaded from uh, the same machine, so locally, my C drive, or it can be loaded from the, the internet. So in this case, mine are actually loaded here on the C drive, so I can not have to deal with network issues. Um, and then we can talk about um, how we deploy those extensions in the next slide. Uh, one thing to note as well is it's not just a one-time context being sent. You can send context back and forth between the link, uh, the, the, the app inside of link conversation window and the source app. You can do that multiple times. So think of it like a, a data pipe, if you will, where you can send information back and forth and keep state, for example. Now, what happens in case someone does not have this application installed, right? So what Marcelo explained just a second ago is I start this application as the sender. At that very moment, I'm sending this app ID. So what needs to be realized is that anyone who receives that app ID, in case the person does not have that app ID installed, then nothing would happen. The only thing that actually happens at that very moment is that you will get an IM that there is a specific application that you need to load. And that is the application that's a hyperlink that comes in the IM mm -hmm. that you actually then need to click to yeah. actually install the application also on the receiving end. Correct. So that is one way of deploying it. It's a, a rather, uh, let's say, mm -hmm. after the fact type of deployment. But it's very important to realize yep. that you actually are sending not only the context of the application, but also a launch link yep. from which you actually can s install that yep. application so that the other party also can have it. Yeah, Mo most of the time, in your managed uh, end endpoints, you can you know, update GPO settings to have these all in pre-installed, for example. But in the case where this hasn't happened, uh, you can send an install link automatically. And they can go and install. The link could be uh, either a reg, uh, reg edit file, or it can be a, an MSI that they can just um, very easily update their registry. Um, this is a slide we should have been on when we're talking about this. So again. Um, what we're talking about here really is registry entries, all right? So I have uh, an app ID under Microsoft uh, Link context packages. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm pointing, right? I'm not, yeah, supposed, to, I'm not supposed to point. But uh, so I have, a, I have an. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> I tried to get We're not pointing. pointing. So I have an app ID um, under registry, uh, my, my registry package. And when I send that context, I have the app ID of, of what I want the other person to use. Now, hopefully, they have the app, the app also registered. And you can do that via GPO, System Center, um, or uh, you can send the, the install link, like Albert said. And he can install it on, on the fly. But ulti ultimately, what's, what's happening is um, it's looking at the package, and it's getting all the information it needs to load that Silverlight application inside of Link. So down here um, on, the bottom, on the bottom right, you can see some of the fields there. I have external URL, so if, if, uh, if Link client is outside of your firewall, it's going to load uh, from, from that uh, URL. If it's internal um, inside the firewall, it can load from a different URL. You can also specify how big you want the extension pane to be. Um, you can specify parameters that it should expect from the, uh, the other uh, source application um, and the app data that comes over. Now let's talk about extending the link conversation window. So up until now, we have integrated the UI within your application. We've set up the uh, contextual info that is being sent. And now we need to create the Silverlight application. And I keep saying Silverlight because we took a dependency on Silverlight. So uh, all the applications that you load into your extensibility pane, if you want that application to speak to link APIs, it must be Silverlight. 
Now, it, it, it's actually a, an IE browser control. So you could load a web page if you wanted to. And actually, you do load a web page, but that web page references a Silverlight zap file. Um, you're, you know, if you don't have a Silverlight zap file, you can access API. So you could have like Yahoo load in there, but nothing on that page would be able to access it via JavaScript, for example. It needs to go through Silverlight. So back to my slide. In this case, we built a Visual Studio uh, Silverlight application. And this application, again, Silverlight, is expecting um, some contextual data to come over from uh, the source app, which in this case um, was Visual Studio. Earlier, I showed you a translator application. And I just want to bring that up here because not only is the translator, um, you know, not, not only is your application allowed to, to speak to the contextual uh, API that's coming over, but it can also speak to the link API and get conversations, incoming and outgoing conversations. It can get participant list. It can see who's in the conversation. It can see the presence of people in the conversation. It can do a, pretty much everything the API is exposed. Um, your application can, can get some value out of. Let me give you actually one example of that. Uh, and that is when we are demonstrating, for example, contact center scenarios. At this very moment, you could build in not only the ability to send data, text data, back and forth, but you actually could control the audio channels as well. So in Link, you do not only have text, you also have audio, and you have application sharing, you have video. So the capability of essentially controlling who you can talk to at what point in time, if you have, for example, a multi-party conversation, and be able to put a call on hold, to be able to actually uh, uh, do a whisper in someone's ear where other people cannot hear it. All that control is available through that integration right. into that uh, right. conversation window extension. Right. So the demo that we are showing tomorrow uh, is actually showing a lot of the client side as well on how that works with the server and how you actually can control those audio paths inside your mm -hmm. conversation window extension. So aside from context input, and the, yes? So Visual Studio has an SDK. So part of their extensible developer story uh, allows you access to that pane that you saw. I built a plugin. Yes. I built, I built a plugin. Um, so, so part of Visual Studio has this whole plugin developer story. So you need to become familiar with you know, whatever, whatever application that you're trying to integrate. You need to understand their developer story um, and, you know, and, find, and then use our SDK to integrate into it. So in the Visual Studio example, um, we created a plugin, a Visual Studio plugin, using our, our controls and our contextual information. So yeah, good question. So um, please feel free to interrupt me. It's, it's, it's fine. Um, also, the, the, the third source that I can do, so not just context and link APIs, but I can use any public web service. So in this case, the translator, it's using Bing APIs to translate the string. So with all, with all that flexibility, there's a lot of different scenarios that I can enable here. All right. Any more questions before I go into some, some code stuff? Yeah. So, so, so in visual. Repeat the question. Uh, so Visual Studio is a WPF product. Can you, can you integrate with WinForms? So you can, use, you can use these controls in WinForms. Yeah. Um, but for Visual Studio, we, we use the WPF controls. Yeah. So now I'm going to go into a proposal tracker uh, application. And here's an app, uh, this actual sample ships with the SDK. So it's why I want to use it to, to jump into the code a little bit. And here, let's just uh, F5 it real fast, and hopefully it'll, it'll work. No. Hey, that's cool, man. Demo gods were good for, for a while. If it crashes, one thing, as long as I can eventually get it, I'll be happy. Let's see. All right, good. 
demo gods aren't too angry yet. I'm pushing it, though. I'm pushing it. All right, so here um, we have a fictitious application uh, called Fabricam. It's a proposal tracker. So it's a Silverlight application, full Silverlight portal. Uh, you know, we showed you Product Studio, which was a, um, a WinForm application. We had a Visual Studio. We had, uh, now we have Proposal Tracker. It's in the, it's in the browser. It's a Silverlight app. Um, what I want to show you is there's no UC enabled here yet. There's no, there's no link lighting up the application. We're going to actually light up the application together. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to jump into the code too much. I just kind of commented out some code lines, and I want to just show you how easy it's. Everything I'm going to show you is like about one line of code. And you'll see how easily it's integrated. So let's jump into the code real fast. And here I have the, um, the main page. Can you maximize the window? Yeah, let me get to the code and I'll, I'll maximize it. We have the main page of my application. And the first thing I'm going to do is insert a my status area control. Now notice, that's just one line of code. And I don't even have to write that one line. If I'm, if I'm too lazy to one, one, write one line of code, I can just drag and drop uh, from my toolbox. So when I download the SDK, we integrate with the uh, Visual Studio toolbox. And let me just find where our controls are. So link SDK controls we see within the Visual Studio toolbox. Right there. Link SDK controls. And you have a list of all the controls that are available to you. In this case, I have a my status area, and I can just take that and drag, drag and drop it into my, my stage. Did it make it? Uh, it's in there somewhere. Can you maximize the window? Um, control Z. I'm controlling Z out of it. I don't know what happened to it. But um, what, when I drag and drop that control, what happens is I see a line of code here. And that one line of code is controls my status area. This control happens to be very easy. There's no attributes really to set. It takes the SIP URI of the endpoint on your machine. And that's really important to note. Um, these APIs leverage the link uh, endpoint. So you don't have to do anything about registering or um, managing the endpoint at all. This was very different from our, our old client API where you had to do all that. And the complexity was, was tremendous. So in this case, I'm just commenting out my status uh, area control. And that's one of the things that we're going we're gonna to show. And let me just F5 that real fast. So you see my up on the top right, uh, now I have a picture of myself. I can change my note from in here. This, is, this works just like you would in Link. So again, I changed it here in the control, and you see it. Uh, updated link as well. Um, I can change my presence. I can be busy, which I am right now, I guess. Um, so let's go ahead and enable some other controls. Um, I want to now go to, where else am I going to go to? Sales leaderboard. So in sales leaderboard, I'm going to add uh, some, some uh, presence indicators. So again, if you look here, it says controls colon presence indicator. And then it says source. That source is a SIP URI. So I have another uh, data file that actually has my list of SIP URIs that I want. But again, this is just a one line um, control that will show my presence uh, jelly bean. And when I hover over it, it'll show me the contact card. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uncomment these. And again, I just want to show you how easy these, the integration piece is. And then we'll get into the contextual piece. And then lastly, I want to add, um, where is it? I want to add my search control. So here, uh, if, you look, if you look right here, I have a con contact search input box. And I can say how many max results that I want. That, uh, to, to, to be returned. I can also, um, I have my search results list. That's my other control. 
And then below that, I'm going to add a contact list. And again, these are all drag and drop. I've got to find all my comments. And here is the contact list. So right here, contact list. And it doesn't really take, you don't have to bind it to anything. Um, it just takes the, the, the local endpoint. There's no configuration you have to do for the contact list. In this case, you'll see um, I have a visibility attribute. And uh, that's just so when I do the search results, the um, contact list will, will transparent out. And you'll see what I mean. So now I've uncommented everything. And I'm going to F5, and hopefully this will work. If I missed a comment somewhere. Come on. All right. So now you see the same application with, I think it was four lines of code that was added. And all of a sudden, I have um, my contacts here on the, on the bottom left. Um, I also have, yep. I also have a, a contact list here on the right. So this is my exact contact list. I have a search input, so I can, I can search for, for Albert. I can also um, group them like I would in Link. So. And again, that's four lines of code. You saw me in comment, four lines of code. And, and that's the kind of light up link integration that you see. Um, additionally, I want to I wanna now jump into the contextual information and show you how that's configured in the code. So if you look in my, in my demo here, um, I have city power and light, which is one of the proposals. And I'm going to click on more. And I see a detail page for city power and light. Again, this is all in the SDK. You can uh, play with this demo all you want and see the exact same lines of code. Here, again, I have some integration. I'm not using a contact list. I'm actually using a flat custom list, which um, I've, uh, I get to say which SIP URIs show up in it. Uh, here, Albert's, Albert's again in that list. And I'm going to start an IM with Albert. And again, I've configured contextual information. And when I send that IM, it's sending the data from the source. So in this case, uh, I have a little mini city, and power, city power and light application that I'm going to show him you know, a snapshot of the data that I was on. I can say, hey, you know, Albert, I'm in this proposal. These numbers look great. Which, which numbers? Well, these numbers right here. He has it right in front of him. And uh, you know, he can change the, the column. Go ahead and change the, on, on his end, he can change it to column. Can you click on column? Yep. And it updates on my end. And I can. And he can keep changing that. So he's changing that, and the app data is just being sent on his, on, his, uh, on his event. So let's go in and look at that integration. How did we make that context happen? And you're going to be surprised that it's actually just a little attribute on one of those lines of code that I showed you. So uh, we're going to go now to proposal details. In proposal details, I'm going to see, where is it? Looking at code while everyone's looking at you. It's quite a skill. You never get used to it. All right, so here, let me maximize this. Um, if you notice here, I have a custom contact list control. So like the contact list control, this is the custom contact list control. Again, it's one line of code. And you'll notice that I added one attribute to it, contextual information. And it binds to contextual info. Now that contextual info, I'll show you, is a little package I put together that has the fields that Link will use to um, set up the extension application on, on Albert's end. So here, I have a application data. And that data can be um, an XML blob, opaque to link. So whatever you know, your, your syntax or whatever you want to pass over, that goes over an application data. 
Um, the application ID, this is the GUID of the application that is registered uh, on both our machines that Link will use to, to, to know, oh, this is what I load in my extension pane. Um, I can set subject of the incoming uh, um, contextual uh, invite, and I can also send a, a contextual link. Um, in addition, I can send an install link, which is not here, but uh, that install link could uh, then tell the user to go install the, the application. So again, one line, one attribute actually, not even one line of code, and, um, and a, a little contextual package that I put together. That's how contextual information uh, is sent. Okay, yeah. Silent install um, for for the app that's being sent. Uh, no, I've never seen that that happen. So, um, the, the can, can you elaborate a little bit more on your question? So, what would you like to have silently installed? Because if you roll this out to your uh, to your let's say all your employees in, at work, right? I I, th I think what he meant like um, in in real time when the install link is sent, if you could install it without the end user having to, to link through it. No, that's no. not. Yeah, so it's, it's a security issue, so. Um, so as part of the deployment of your application, you just push everything out with that package, including your, your uh, So, repeat the question. So your, your question is, when I deploy my, my end users, my, my link clients, Yeah, so, so if I wanted this to just work for everybody, um, they would have Link installed on their machines already. Um, I could probably, if I wanted to do it all in one install, maybe I could chain an MSI that would do this. Um, but we, so we recommend having your own MSI uh, for your install, which people can, like for, internally, for example, we have an, like a, like an internal app store, which um, you know, describes what the app is, People can go and self-select themselves and say, oh, I want the Visual Studio uh, integration. Then so they'll click on the MSI, and it'll update their registry. It'll put the, the, the zap file on their local machine. Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it is um, it's really not even an install that needs to really happen. You just have to update the registry. So if you, if you install Link, and then you, have a, you run a GPO uh, script or, or a, through System Center, and just update all your endpoints registries, that's all you've got to do. You don't have to install anything on their, on their application. You can have it on a shared network. But remember what uh, was the four things that you are doing, right? So you're installing in the registry at that point in time then an ID, a, u a unique identifier, a GUID for that particular application. But what is more important is that you also are sending essentially in that registry, you're setting two URLs. One for when you are inside the firewall and one for when you are, if yeah. you allow so, outside of the firewall, of where to actually retrieve the application, the zap file, that essentially does all the work in the extension window. So once you have set those parameters inside the registry file, when you fire up the application, it actually looks up in the registry where to load, yeah. from which URL to load that application inside that uh, extension window. So, so you, don't, you don't have to install anything on, on, on bits on the machine. All you have to do is update the registry. So maybe when you, when you, when you install Link, you can, I know you can, you can um, append a, a reg file with your Link install, and that could have all the, up, you know, the app IDs necessary. So, yeah. So the, there's an XML blob that we are sending back and forth, right? And yep. it has, I think, 1K or 2K? Um, it, it differs. The initial one is much smaller. So um, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure exactly the exact numbers, but um, the, the, the SDK documentation has that. There is a limit, yeah. but you can send it in multiple data. Exactly. So for example, uh, there is a, a series of four articles that we just published on MSDN on how to do this in interaction with speech recognition. So what is the application that they've built there is that you have essentially a visual IVR. You dial in into a, a phone number, and you were asked, for example, from which city to which city would you like to fly. At that very moment, what you will see on the screen in the extension window is what has been recognized by the recognizer. Given the fact that you can actually continuously send those little data blobs of, let's say, 1 or 2K, I believe it's 2K, at that point in time, you can continuously keep sending it in case the package is bigger. But you, of course, on the receiving side, also need to unpack it and need to be able to parse it. 
So the, the initial one is probably 2K, but, but the, um, the ones afterwards are bigger. They are even so bigger. In the okay. hundreds, I think. So. So the question is, if you are actually using this blob of data that you have, is that also the data that you actually send inside the, uh, let's say, instant message that is going back and forth? Is that the question? Well, like you had the, you had the uh, bar chart, the pie chart. Uh, yeah, chart. that's using this, this, this contextual data. The source, oh, the source, yes. Yeah, that, that, that context data is your, your data pipe. Link doesn't look into that. So you can use that back and forth, back and forth. So, and just to repeat for the recording the question, right? So at the moment that you have this blob being passed back and forth, that is just in the application, yeah. your application that is done. At the moment that you would like to interact with the API actually that is inside Link itself, at that very moment you actually are calling APIs. It's that a different API. It's yeah. a different API. Yeah. Uh, let's see, let's go, any more questions before we start? We're gonna have like 15 minutes at the end as well. So. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is the actual um, extens extension application that is inside of Link, listening for the context. So I'll show you that right now. So within my same project, I have a little, I have a little folder here called Mini Proposal Tracker. And this is the little Silverlight application that we built that will be loaded inside of uh, the Link Conversation window. Let me open up the project for that. And I just want to show you uh, that one line of code that it's listening for uh, uh, the context information. It's in just one file application. And here, if you look down here, let me find it. Conversation context data received. So this is my class that looks for the contextual events that are coming over. Um, and you can see receiving radio button. So it's looking for that, that radio button that, that he was changing. Um, if we look a little bit uh, lower, this is, this is it receiving the context, and then it has another one for actually sending. So it calls begin send context data. So here you see it's, it received the context and it processed it, and now it's saying, well, here's some context back at you. You know, so it's sending the, the, the application GUID, it's sending here checked radio button. Um, so that's, that's what the little app's doing, listening and sending context. Um, let's see, what else did I have planned for this? That's all for integration um, part of the, of the presentation. Now, there's a fourth, that was three things, integrate, send context, and extend. But the, the title of the show is four things. What, what's, the, what's the fourth thing? I'm you're ripping me off here. Let's see. Um, the fourth thing, which has nothing to do with what I just showed you, is uh, if none of that works for you, and I think, I think most of you are probably going to use just what I, what I showed, but sometimes uh, we have a need for building a kiosk, for example. Um, in this case, we have a partner, uh, Global Crossing. Actually, they're a customer. Um, they use this, this kiosk in their lobby. People walk up to their lobby, and uh, they will use this big button UI to, to look up the employee that they're visiting. And um, when they find them, they're going to uh, start a conversation, a video conversation. And this, this, this photo here, this video, is the remote party at their desk. So they're, at, they're at their desk, and they see, oh, um, incoming visitor kiosk. Uh, and I, you, you can see the person in the webcam and say, oh, look, it's, it's, uh, it's Albert. I want to, it's not really Albert, but I, I, I want to, uh, he's here to visit me. Uh, Albert, what do you want? And Albert can talk and they can, I'll be down in two seconds. So they're, they're doing this using our API as well. 
but they're using it in something called full UI suppression mode. So everything I showed you up until now, if you were to use our APIs, the link client would say, you know, would respond to it. It would say, oh, he created a conversation. I'm going to show my conversation window. Um, you know, but in this scenario, I don't want that to happen. I don't want link to be on the machine. I want it to be a kiosk application. So in full UI suppression mode, you set a registry key. When link starts, it reads that registry key, and it says, oh, I shouldn't show my face. I shouldn't show my UI. So all the APIs are available to you. You get the, all the events, conversation added events, IMs, all that good stuff. Um, but link won't respond to it. You're taking care of it. You're providing the UI. So in this case, big button UI. So that's just for a very um, a niche scenario. And I, I could show you, um, you know, an application that runs that. I, I want to leave more time for If it takes me three minutes to do it, I'll, I'll show you. Um, so let me, let me see if I can get this done in three minutes. And what is important is that at this very moment, you really need to disable the, the way of having link popped up, right? So that is the more, more key element. So that's why this is such a, a let's say, niche scenario, yeah. as Marcelo called it, because it is typically used for those people who do not want to use link in its UI as Microsoft has built it. And the video kiosk is actually the most uh, important one. Yeah. We have customers that do not only build the receptionist that uh, Marcelo showed, but yeah. for, ex also, for example, also an application in which there is uh, an, um, uh, uh, an ATM, like for example, right? So it has its UI that is not link-like, but still offers yeah. this consultant that actually is able to help a person at an ATM, for example, to do a mortgage yeah. consult. So here I have a registry, um, a reg file here that's going to update my, my registry. You see um, UI suppression mode. This is the registry entry I was telling you about. UI suppression mode equal to zero, meaning I'm just normal right now. Um, I'm going to set that to one real fast. Demo gods, be nice. I'm going to burn some candles later for the demo gods. All right. Now I'm going to open up my, my application that is done in full UI suppression. Oh, before I do that, I have to exit link. Again, this is full UI suppression, and link doesn't quite know to look at the registry yet. So I'm going to exit. <coughs> and the application's actually going to uh, start link. So you don't have to have link running on the machine. Um, your app can actually initialize uh, link. So in this case, when I start up my, my full suppressed uh, application, it's going to start link. Um, and this time, link, when it starts, is going to see that registry. And it's going to say, oh, no UI, no UI. Don't wake up. And if you notice, I don't have link on the machine. I mean, it's running right now. Um, actually, not yet, but when I F5 it. So now I have fived it. Um, this little UI you see here that I'm moving around, that's my application. And you see, link's not on the machine. Well, it actually is. The process is there. But the UI is not there. The end user can't get to it. Only this application can. So in this case, I'm going to um, interact with my machine. And this is a very basic, basic uh, sample application, also in the SDK. It doesn't really do much other than um, it recreates link um, in a very basic UI. So I'm signing into my application now. Oh, actually, I, I'm supposed to use my own, my own credentials. I used the uh, average credentials. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not going to work. Now, I'm going to start it over again. Come on, demo gods. All right. So my credentials. I got to change my password later. <laughs> yeah. All right. Don't use that. <laughs> Give me time to change it later. All right. Marcelo Farjala. Um, I'm, I'm now signed into my, my application. Um, it's using link APIs. I'm going to now put in Albert uh, A. Koeman. Koeman. And I'm going to start uh, create a conversation. So now this API has created a conversation. And it's in the conversation window, um, you notice it's not Link's conversation window. It's some funky, gray, basic conversation window. But 
all we want to show you is that you can actually create, you can you have your own conversation window UI in this full UI expression mode. Now I'm going to start a conversation with, uh, with Albert, and hopefully it'll work. And I just heard an echo, so that means I'm speaking to Albert through the application. All right. We can also start video. So um, I'm going to start some video here. And that's me. That's Albert. So all this, all this is using the model API, the, the link API, uh, without link um, uh, responding to it. This, so you can have your own UI in full UI expression mode. Um, I can also hold. So let's, let's hold this. And now you can see that I'm moving and my picture's not moving. Wow. Um, I can retrieve the hold. I can transfer. And I won't transfer to anyone here, but um, I can transfer. I can do a consultative uh, con a consult transfer. I can also send DTMF uh, messages. So I just wanted to show you that I, how much, how, how powerful the API is, um, even if you don't use this full UI expression mode, um, you know, all these APIs are available to you. I don't know why I just pushed, but I could also add someone else to the conversation and escalate to a, to a conference. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that other than just I wanted to let you know that aside from integration scenarios, there is a custom scenario that you can do as well. And that, that pretty much ends my presentation. We can now um, take some questions. Um, I have 15 minutes of questions that I can take. Sure. Yeah. So repeat the question. So I think what you're asking is, uh, do you have recording APIs that you can say to record? Yeah. Um, in, uh, unfortunately, not. So you, we, don't, we don't expose recording APIs in, in this release. Uh, that's to say on the client side. So on if you would side. like to do this, there are server side APIs in which you effectively yeah. create a back-to-back -back user agent. We are going to talk about that tomorrow. That back-to-back -back user agent essentially hooks itself inside the conversation. And at that very moment, you can make a recording of whatever you would like to record. So Perfect. there is no client-side uh, recording API, but there is a server-side recording API. And typically, those solutions are built by third parties and not built by Microsoft. Yeah. Please, do, do come to the UCMA um, session tomorrow. For you guys who are leaving, uh, don't forget to uh, give me a, um, what do you call that? Evaluation. Evaluation. So if you like what you saw, give me an evaluation to see me again. If you didn't like what you saw, don't send an evaluation. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Yep. So link. Can you repeat the question? Uh, what do you do if the remote party is offline? Are there offline features um, in the API? So link itself doesn't have. Um, no, we have a product called Exchange yeah. for that. But then, uh, that's for the people who are, no. So of course, there, there is this uh, feature of how you could do this uh, by, again, implementing something that intercepts it. But Link, as such, doesn't support this at all. Yeah. Link doesn't support it, and out of the box, the API doesn't as well. There's another, another question over here. Yeah. Yeah, so the session tomorrow is 8.30, and that's about, effectively, the server-side API called UC Managed API. Uh, it's 8.30 in the same room, I think. Other questions? Yep. How much of this would work on the uh, Macintosh web On the Macintosh? None of it. <laughs> yeah, so this, this API is strictly for the, the Windows, the PC-rich client. And uh, just to uh, uh, re-emphasize that, right? So what we saw, uh, saw here is taking a full dependency on this executable, which is yeah. essentially running as a process communicator.exe. So as soon as that is not running, you cannot do this. That does not mean that we actually do not support scenarios where you actually are using, uh, let's say, a, a, a reach scenario. However, for that, you actually use the APIs that are on the server side. And uh, you use a different set of APIs. Yeah, this, this is a version one API. Um, and it's, uh, we have initial partners that are using it. Um, all the customers that we have in our program, our beta program, really liked it. I think it's going to take off. And if it does, we can dream of seeing it um, in other clients. Over here, yeah. Um, is there an SDK for the link client that runs on an IP phone? 
is there an SDK for the link uh, server that runs on an IP phone? Um, no, there is not. So now, actually, I want to go a little bit deeper on what Marcelo was saying just a second ago, right? So this was version 1.0 of this API. What you will see happening in the coming year is that there is going to be a very strong trend uh, to actually have a proliferation of devices, right? So you see it happening already now with all the smartphones. So the, the tendency of what we are seeing is that we will have still a strong investment in everything that is Windows, Windows as it is at this very moment. But besides that, there will also be a trend to actually start supporting this uh, big reach of all the other devices. However, it will be a new API that actually uh, will support those devices. So it's, if you are inside the firewall, if you're inside your company, if you are using uh, Link as the client as such, this is a perfect API. If you are supporting, let's say, devices that are not PCs, not Windows PCs, at that very moment, I would uh, suggest to wait a little and to see what's yeah. going on or take a look at the server-side APIs as they are now. Question in the back over there. So uh, the question is, are the server-side APIs the APIs that we use for the web access component? Well, let's be very clear. Uh, Link, at this very moment, does not have a web app. Uh, so uh, at this very moment, the only web app that exists is in the uh, Outlook web access or Outlook web app. And yes, Outlook web app essentially talks to a layer that is a server-side layer to on top of this UC managed API and is talking uh, through, let's say, HTML and JavaScript uh, to that API. So yes, it is using the server-side API to do that. In the SDK, actually, we also ship uh, in the UC managed API uh, a uh, SDK, we ship a sample to actually show that. And yesterday in the overview session, although it did not work at that very moment when it should work, we actually showed an HTML client that you actually could use uh, in order to do instant messaging. So yeah, UCMA is a, a managed server API that you can wrap in a, in a web service. Yeah. And this SDK shows you a sample of that. You can get that um, if you Bing search for uh, UC, UCMA um, 2010. Now, one of the important limitations of that server-side API in this current version is that in contrast to the, uh, the the link managed API, you cannot use on the server side API audio and video. Now there are all kinds of people that are finding all kinds of interesting workarounds uh, in order to do that. But uh, the biggest limitation is that it's currently the server side API is I am in presence, call control, mm -hmm. and uh, text uh, only, essentially. Well, that, that's for another presentation. What, what's the title of the session again? I do not know off the top of my head. Oh, okay, so, uh, someone asked about that. 8.30 tomorrow? Yeah, I will look it Maybe up. you can look it up. Another question? Mm, there. You. Good question. Thank question you. is? Um, can I desktop share in UI suppression mode? Uh, the short answer is no, and I'll explain to you why. Um, the actual model uh, of the API doesn't support desktop sharing. It supports instant messaging, uh, audio, video. And that's, that's it. Um, the link controls allow you to fire and forget desktop sharing. But the forget part is because we don't have the underlying supporting model. Um, in full UI suppression mode, you don't have the controls and you don't have that, that automation. Um, you know, you're relying on the model completely. So you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do that in this version. Um, I, would, I would hold on to that for next version. So ver version one, we focused on instant messaging and audio video, and that was a huge chunk for us to even release. Okay. Sorry about that. For UCM? What was the question? So, the, so could you use the UC managed API to do desktop sharing at this very moment? No. Right. Any other questions before we, we end this fabulous presentation? All right. Please go to, oh, one more question. Yep. Uh-huh. 
System Center Service Manager does not have link integrated at this moment, to my knowledge. So the uh, but you could use it to, to, to update your registry. Um, yes. Machine yeah, that's, but that's, but you are right. meaning that you have link. What what is what would you like to do with System Center? Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, so out of the box, it's not integrated. Yeah, System Center as a help desk tool does not have link integrated. But, uh, it, but if, it, if it has an extension story of its own, you can, you can integrate it um, within it. It's just up, you know, you can use RSTKs with any other extension story. Oh, really? Great, yeah. he knows more than we do. So th there is presence in there. So, so All right. That's a, so the question is, hey, if you have OCS integration, does it work for Link as well? Yes, it does. The, um, what we call automation API of the old communicator is still supported. However, um, at times we uh, publish an update on our roadmap. This is one of the APIs that in the next version will go away, in what next major version will go away. So uh, be prepared that the automation API will go away as it used to be supported in Communicator 2007 and 2007 R2, which also is the case, by the way, for the UC Client API, which was another API, which was an unmanaged API, a C++, uh, C++ API. That API is also going to go away in the next major version upgrade and be essentially replaced by the new APIs that I spoke about that we have not spoken Why about Why should yet. they believe this API won't go away? Oh, because this is, well, <laughs> you can ex uh, explain that. No, the UC uh, client API is a very old API, right, yeah. essentially, so that's... The, the, the APIs that he's talking about were very low level. We basically just exposed to you the SIP layer um, without much effort into making that into a full, robust developer story. Uh, this API is an investment um, that we did on purpose, and we have a whole team supporting this API now and moving forward. Um, so it's its own product. So there's... Now, for all those people who did not use Link yet, right, and you would like to play around with this, there is a website called gotuc.net, so G-O-T-U-C.net. And although uh, the MVP who was running it was not very responsive, but you effectively can ask there for a Link account. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to try it out, go to gotuc.net and actually uh, register there for that website, and you will get a Link account, and you can install Link on your own computer. Yeah. And you can actually start, you get two accounts. You can start doing conversations with yourself. In addition it, to all these links that I have on the PowerPoint as well. Exactly. But if you would like to start developing on Link without having Link deployed, okay. it's a full Link Exchange uh, deployment that we have there to actually try out the APIs on the Unified Communications. All right, you guys, our time is up. It was a pleasure presenting to you guys. If you haven't used Link yet or have in your co uh, company, think about it. And also, if you do have Link, Get the SDK, do this integration, you'll, you'll